For more information, visit www.hosannadavid.com. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I bring greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we all know, we are living in the very end of the end times. And there is no need to pretend about the truth anymore. Because we know that the time is coming. And it is very, very close. When both the dead and the living will stand before the judgment seat of God. And every one of us will give account of how we live our lives while in the body. As we talk now, we are expecting the return of the Lord. He will either come to us in the rapture, or we will go to Him through death. And there is no need to pretend anymore, because there are lots of things that are happening today that we need to address as a church. There is no need, I say, to pretend anymore. When your house is on fire, there is no need to chase after rats, but you face the fight. You forget about whosoever that is watching you, and you make sure that you save your properties from getting raised down by the fire, and also make sure that there is no loss of lives. Now, as a body of Christ, I want to say categorically that our house is on fire and we have to do everything that we can to make sure that we quench this fire. Because Jesus Christ is not coming for a dirty church. He is coming for a holy church. He is coming for a church that has been washed clean, a church that has been sanctified, a church that is ready to meet the Lord of hosts. Let us pray. O Lord our King, we thank you for this great opportunity you have given to us to share this word of truth with the body of Christ and with the world. It is my prayer, Lord, that you speak through me to your children. I have nothing to offer, but I know that you are the God of truth. In you, there is no deception at all. Therefore, Lord, speak to your children in the language that they will understand. Speak through me, both to myself and to my hearers, that this words will become useful to us while we live in the body. And on the last day, we will be told, well done, good and faithful servant. May this words never be used against us on the last day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The word we are going to look at today, the topic is Be Ye Holy. And we want to look at this holiness from the point of purity. And we want to address some issues in the body of Christ, I mean the church. I want us to read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because... Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. This is a call to the body of Christ, that we should be holy, even as God Almighty is holy. I know a lot of people, when they tune their radio, and a preacher introduces a topic like this, some of them will feel offended. Some of them will feel they are going to waste their time. Some of them will just conclude, Oh, this is one of the holier than thou preacher. 
But I tell you the truth, that it is only the truth that can set you free. It is when you know the truth, and you are living in the truth, and you receive a proclamation from a servant of God, and you receive it with joy, that is when it can produce a miracle. But I tell you, if you pour water on a rock, it will never penetrate it. But if you grind the same rock into dust and you turn water on it, it will definitely penetrate it. So you have to make your life ready to be fertile enough. If your life is not fertile enough, it doesn't matter who prays for you. Any prayer that is rendered upon your life, if you are not ready to receive the blessings, it will never work in your life. Even if it works by faith or by God's mercy, it is not automatic. It is just by luck. Therefore, I encourage you to listen to this message wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, whether on the radio or on the internet or those of you that are listening right now. I want you to pay a very good attention because it is not just about teaching people how to pray. It is not just about teaching people how to live by faith. It is also about teaching people how to live a holy life because holiness is the nature of God. And if anyone must abide in him, if God must abide in anyone, that one must put on the nature of Christ. The Bible says in the passage we just read, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 to 16, that, but as he who hath called you is holy, so be ye holy, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Why God is asking us to live a holy life is because he himself is holy. What is holiness? Holiness is a nature of God. It is pureness. It is wholesomeness. It is a life of righteousness. It is a life of purity. It is a life that is devoid of sin. I am not saying that living holy does not mean that you will not face temptation. I am not saying that the garment of righteousness will never be stained by sin at all. But when you have the nature of God in you, you will be conscious that you are living in a dirty world. You will be conscious that you are living in a world that is filled of different kind of colors of sin. And you will be conscious that Jesus Christ has given us a free garment of righteousness. And in all manner of conversation, in all your ways, you have the intention, the primary intention, not to hurt the Lord, not to sin against God, but to do your very best to please God. That means a Christian may fall into temptation, but a Christian does not live inside of it. A holy Christian may fall into temptation by mistake, but they don't dwell in it. A Christian does not live in sin. Why is it that we need to live a holy life? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Praise the Lord. The number one reason we need to live a holy life, if we don't understand who we are, we will never be able to live according to the plan of our manufacturer. I say manufacturer because when you get a vehicle, when you get a machine, when you get an electronic device, you look at your manual. God is our manufacturer. God is our creator. He is our maker. And if we don't understand who we are, we will not be able to operate ourselves. If we don't understand the nature of God and the nature of mankind, we will never be able to accomplish our assignment in this world. The Bible says that on the day of creation, God created man. But after molding man 
from the dust of the earth using honorary earth, honorary dust. The Bible says that man was lifeless and God decided to bring a part of himself. And that part is what is called in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the breath of God. The life of every living thing is in the breath. When the breath leaves, the body becomes empty of life. After creation, after molding the body, it was lifeless. And God breathed into the nursery of man the breath of life and man became a living soul. The life that we carry, the nature that we carry is the nature of God. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, there was a meeting in heaven before man was ever created. Genesis 1 26 and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fire of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Praise God. Man was created in the image of God after God's own likeness. God did not create us to look like animals. So God is a holy God. God is a holy God. And the very life he gave to us, that life is his very life. That life contains his nature. For us to retain our original nature, we must adopt the nature of God. The nature of the life of God. And that nature is the nature of holiness. 1 Peter 1.16 Be ye holy, for I am holy. Me that you came out from, I am holy. And for you to be able to live well, you need to be holy. We are living in a world that is full of so much unholy things. The world is corrupt. Satan lives in this world. He is moving to and fro, looking for someone to devour. And he is devouring as many as he can because people choose not to live the life of dominion. People want to have power. People want to have authority. But how many people are ready to live the life that can retain the authority? If you are a member of a kingdom, if you are occupying a position of authority, there are rules, there are guidelines you must follow. There is a constitution for every citizen. You cannot throw away the constitution of your country, of your kingdom, and you still want to be seen and uh, given the privileges of a citizen. I tell you, in every country, there are prisons. Call them correctional center or prison, whatsoever name you call them. The truth is that there is a place that is called prison. A place meant for those who decide to break the law. Satan was in heaven. He was not Satan. He was Lucifer when he was in heaven. But when the moment he allowed sin into his heart, the moment he allowed pride to push him against his maker, he was thrown down from heaven. There was no place meant for him. There are people, there are Christians living in the world today. They are in prison because they decided to forsake the way of the law. They decided to throw away the constitution of the kingdom of God. And that constitution is the Holy Bible. Many don't care to read it. Many don't care about what is written in it. They care about what somebody is telling them. They care about their own intuition. They care about their own will. We are created in the image of God after God's own likeness. And it is a must that we live the life 
of God's nature. The Spirit of God lives in the body. I was leading a service on Sunday and I said, when Jesus Christ came down to die for us, people could never imagine how great the cost of coming down from heaven is. And a lot of people today, they argue that Jesus can't be God. But I said that Jesus is God. It was not the first time that God actually came down because of man. When he was creating man, he was here. All other things, he spoke and they came to pass. But when he came to man, God did the work of a sculpture. God decided to mold man with his own hands. And among all the things that were created, it is only man that carries the path of God, the soul, the Bible says, Genesis 2, 7, and God breathed into the nursery of, of man, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That is why man can never die. When Jesus was to restore man, there was the need for him to come down again. This time around, not as God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but as God the Son, God in the flesh, and he came as Emmanuel. God with us. Isaiah said, this child is going to be called Emmanuel. That means God himself is going to dwell with mortal men. Hallelujah. And Jesus came and restored us back to our former state of dominion and authority. There is power in Christianity. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The prayer of the line the word righteous man, not the prayers of sinners. A lot of times I see people pray, 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 pray. But without results, they believe that by screaming and shouting, they will be heard by heaven. They believe that by screaming and shouting, demons will fear them. No, you have to carry the authority you have to carry the seal of the holy ghost and when demons see you before you open your mouth to speak they see the light of god in you they see the guardian angels of god around you they see the holy spirit in you and they flee remember when jesus uh, several times in the bible he, he, when demons people who are possessed with demons see him they cry out have you come to destroy us before our time? Have you come to destroy us? Even without prayer. There is power in holiness. Holiness is the nature of God. The Spirit of God is called the Holy Spirit. And wherever the Spirit of God must live, that place must be holy. It must be swept clean. Holiness is very, very important. How many Christians have thrown away holiness? It is very, very difficult to hear the message of holiness today. Because a lot of people are in. They are in. But they are not in. They are in for a reason. And that reason is their stomach. So they want to tell people what they want to hear. And not what God wants them to tell the people. Holiness is very important. It is the nature of Christ. It is the nature of God. It is the nature of the man that God created. The man before the fall. And Jesus Christ came down to us to restore us back to the Father. If you want to carry the power of God, clean the house of God. Make the house clean. Let the Holy Spirit find you worthy enough to stay by God's grace. And when you can house him, if you can house the Holy Spirit, I tell you, no demon will torment you. No power of darkness will come near your dwelling place. Holiness is not an option. It is a must. There are so many benefits of holiness right here in this world and after this world. The best one is after this world. The most important, and that is the access to heaven. Because nothing unclean shall by no means enter into it. 
In what aspect of our lives is God asking us to live a holy life? God is asking us to live holy life in everything we do. So be ye holy in all you do. 1 Peter 1.15 In all we do. In our thoughts. In our speech. In our action. In our dressing. If you become born again, your thoughts must be born again. Your actions must be born again. Your speech must be born again. Your way, manner of running your business must be born again. Your wardrobe must be born again. Everything around you, including the way you move, including the way you walk, the Holy Spirit becomes the one that is doing the leading and not you. I know it can really become challenging when you stay too long in the world and you come to know Christ. Your bad character may not vanish away overnight, but by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the grace of God, you continue to work on them. As you look at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the perfect man, as you gaze on him, you become, you, you begin to transform. Your life begins to transform daily. And the, the reflection of the Jesus you keep gazing you, your eyes on, you become transformed to his image daily. The early Christians, early followers of Christ were called Christians because they were transformed and they were behaving like Christ. I said, I want to address the issue of purity. The issue of purity today. Our body is a temple of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says, Know ye not that Ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? The temple of God is holy, and we are the temple of God. And this body, this temple must be kept clean. The body, if, oh my God, if we know how much God treasures our body, if we know how much God has deposited in us, we will not live the life we live. We will not do some of the things we do. God, a lot of time, looks down from heaven and is disappointed at us. Oh, how can God Almighty choose to find our heart and our body a dwelling place, a selected place to dwell, and then we push him out because we don't want to change. Many of us are not ready to comply with the ways of this kingdom. If you are asked from the streets to be a member of this kingdom, you must change your dressing. You must remove the garment of witchcraft. You must remove the garment of shams and concussions. The garment of, um, of mesmerizing people using hypnosis to, de to destroy people and control people. You must throw away your fornication. You must throw away your life of stealing. You must throw away your life of destruction and put on the garment of righteousness. We are the temple of God. We are the spirit of God lives. A lot of people don't still understand that we are living in a world that is drunk with immorality. I say it a lot of times that so many uh, people who used to, uh, when they say somebody ties cutting, it means that the person is uh, a prostitute. So many people in the 18th century who were prostitutes, some of them are well-dressed, some of them are more morally right than many people who call themselves Christians today. We are living in a world that is sinking inside the morality and painfully enough, nobody, only a few, nobody except only a few wants to address the situation. The situation is so bad that Jesus is relying on us to speak against these things, Jesus is relying on us to come out of the world and stand with him and condemn these things and pull people from the joy of hell. But how many people are addressing this issue 
As a matter of fact, when you speak against immorality, either in the church or in the world, and you condemn these things, you will see people who will rise up to say, hey, holier than thou attitude. There are people Satan has put in place to shut you down. They are ready to shut you up at any time. I remember a man who woke up to me one day. And he told me, the way you preach against these things, I don't like it. He gave me his own reasons. And I told him, I asked him, the way people go naked today on the streets and even some half naked on the church, was it like that 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 30 years ago? He said no. I asked him, when you were a youth, because he is an elderly man, he's a grandfather. When you were a youth, was immorality as high as this? He said, no. I told him, me, I am tormented. We have to speak. And I told him, people in your time refuse to address this issue. And we are suffering it today. And I begged him. I said, sir, please pray for me so that I can talk more. Pray for me because I am not going to stop. I need the grace of God to talk more. It is time to rise up because the Jesus Christ is not coming for a dirty church. He is not coming for a sexy church. He is coming for a holy church. He is coming for a church that is prepared. He is coming for saints that are ready. Oh my God. There are so many issues, so many issues. Today we see people, everybody wants to do white wedding. And they cover the veil. Even some with pregnancy, they cover the veil. They, it is the height of immorality we have seen today. People with pregnancy wearing a veil. The veil means that you have not been uncovered. It means that nobody has seen what only your husband or your wife is supposed to see. It means you are untouched, you are pure. The white represents purity. How many people are pure? In fact, I told some persons, I said, how could a Christian be born in church? A child is born in church as a Christian. But before the child gets to the age of the, the point of getting married, they have a list of S. Or call them S's. A very long list. What is the difference between you and a prostitute in a brother? It is so, it is so, so appalling, so painful today that we, we, some of us don't even see anything wrong with this immorality again. To the point that some marriage counselors, some Christian marriage counselors now advise uh, intended couples that, oh, it doesn't mean anything. You go and test yourself. It, it, it is very, very important. You need to know what you are buying. Is that the scripture? The Bible says, if the foundation are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? But I tell you the truth, the word of God says that every one of us, everyone, both the cripple, both the rich, both the whole, both the poor, everybody, the mighty men, the kings, the warriors, the leaders, the presidents, everybody, including you that is listening to me now. Every one of us are going to file on a queue. I say it every time that I am not here to please anybody because everybody is going to be on the queue. A member may queue in front of his pastor. A pastor may queue in front of the member. Everybody is going to be on the queue. And we are going to be addressed as servants. Servants. Every one of us are servants. There is need for us to be careful. The world has become so, so, so dirty, so, so attached to immorality that the, if, if it is not promoted by immorality, it, it does not sell. If a movie does not have a caption that it can provoke somebody's thought, then it will not move market. If the pictures on it that is selling a movie or a song, if it is not worldly, if, it, if, it, if it's not made of, of immorality, it will not sell. And a lot of Christians are promoting this thing. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We have a kingdom, and in all our ways, in all our doings, let us remember that we are passing through this world, and that Jesus Christ is coming to receive us. 
Don't get carried away by what is happening today. How many people have complained to me that I went to church and my pastor's wife called me to order that, sister, the way you are dressing today, you are going to lose your husband. Oh my God. The things that we're supposed to speak against, the things that we're supposed to condemn, they are the things that some of us promote. There is difference between beauty. There is difference between attraction by beauty and being attracted to someone because the person looks sexually provocative. Every child of God should look beautiful. We should look neat. We should look smart. But a child of God must not go half naked. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, they hid themselves because they were naked. Today, people go naked and they go boldly before God and say, God, we are naked and we are not ashamed of our nakedness. Here we are. What can you do to us? If you are God, come down and give us fire. If you call yourself God, I tell you, God may not come down for you immediately, but he is waiting for you. He is waiting for me. I'm not stupid. I know that he is coming. I've seen it a lot of times. And he tells me, one people, it doesn't matter how much they condemn you. It doesn't matter how much they hate you. Warn them that I am coming for them. He is coming. God is coming for the church. And the judgment is going to begin with a household of faith. It is going to begin with us. And except we get ready. The Bible says, if the righteous man will scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly, where shall the immoral, where shall the unserious? Oh my God. Where will they lift up their head? Well, with those who say it doesn't matter anything, we are talking about a kingdom, an everlasting kingdom, and people are saying it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. They can swing, they can swing on anything called rope. If you want to swing on something to cross a river of fire, and you don't want to test the truth first, you don't want to test the strength of the rope first. If, you, if it cuts and you fall into the fire, it's over for you. And a lot of people are very much ready to fall into the fire. I hear people say, something must kill a man. A man must die one day. Anyhow you die, death is dead. No, death is not dead. My father in the Lord preached a message. He was talking about the grace to die. That don't die anyhow. They, I can't forget the message. He said there is a grace to die. It's not just a grace to live life, but the grace to die. There is a grace to die. Don't die anyhow. Don't die anyhow. I've seen videos of men who go to hotels with some people, even someone's wife, the, the recent one I saw, and the man died. And they say something must kill a man. If you want to die, die like a hero. If you want to die, die like a soldier of Jesus Christ. Don't die a shameful death. Heroes don't die. They cross the bridge to the other side. And their names and their deeds are immortalized forever. Heroes don't die. Don't die anyhow. There is a grace to die well. Die. And even when you are gone, your life will still be in the lives of people. Those you help. Those you help to stand. Those you brought into the kingdom. They will believe him. I say that. It is not good that people die and their memories vanishes away from the world. But when before you die, spread your lives. In the lives of, spread your very life. In the lives of people. So that even when you are gone, people are remembering you. You, you, you have your monuments. The people have their monuments in their hearts. Nations remember you. How many people can forget Nelson Mandela? Because this man spread his life in the lives of people. He stood for the truth. Even after his death, we saw the will that he willed some of his wealth to institutions. In Nigeria today, people die and we begin to recover loot for years. Abasha died many years ago. But we are still recovering his loot. And they are looting the loot. May God deliver us. Something must kill a man. When people even see that, oh, this person has diseases. 
They want to go in. May God deliver human beings. May God Almighty deliver those who are enslaved to sin. I have seen men abandoning their families because there is one somebody out there. How can a man living in three bedroom flat with his family abscond with a lady and rent a, a one room apartment? Face me and face you. And he will hang his trouser on a six inches nail. And he is happy. So a, a small girl is rubbing your head and you are happy. And your children are crying. You don't deserve to be a husband. You do not deserve to be a man. You do not deserve to be a father. You are a disgrace to fatherhood. Immorality has risen so high. People no longer care about what is right. We see over the news. Men impregnating their own children. In the name of pleasure. In the name of Satan push me. People say Satan push me. Satan push you. Where did you position yourself? And allow Satan to push you. If you had remained in the presence of God, Satan will not break in to push you to commit that sin. I am not trying to downplay temptation. Temptations must surely come, but when you are in the presence of the Lord, they will have no power over you. He gives you the strength to overcome them all. There is so much immorality today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. It is very, very saddening today that the, the things that people are supposed to do in secret and hide them in secret, they come to the public and brag about them. They don't care who hears them. They are even proud. And some of them are Christians. Oh my God. Lord, deliver us. Deliver your church. It has become so high. Immorality has climbed the ladder so high today that people no longer see it as anything. There are, I tell you one bitter truth, that if you decide to suspend every member that commits fornication or adultery or some high level of immorality, if you decide to suspend all of them, I tell you, some congregation will remain only a few persons. When you look at some people dressing to church, you will know that they are not going there to worship God, but to sell their markets. These things shouldn't be seen in church. Don't come and advertise yourself and sell yourself. This is the house of God. It is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have turned it to a den of robbers. The immoral dressing today is so high to the point that a sister was telling me, sister living abroad, she said, uh, in the country where they moved to, she said people were mistaking her for a Muslim because she used to cover herself, not because she wears hijab, no. Why? Because those people, what they Think about the Christians that they have met have changed their thinking faculty. Their reasoning faculty about their view, I mean their view about Christians. They believe that a Christian lady is one that must look sexy. So when they see somebody dressing very, very decently, they will assume mistaken the person to be a Muslim. Shame on us. Shame on us. Shame. I say shame on us. Jesus is angry. And except we repent, the word, if we live our lives according to the standard of the kingdoms of this world, we have no part in the kingdom of heaven. It is the one we represent on earth 
that is going to reward us after this world. Some of these congregations are full of the atmosphere of loss. Satan parades himself. Forget about some of these miracles. They, some of them are manipulated and some of them are demonically inspired. I tell you the truth and I know what I'm saying. Atmosphere of lust. Instead of atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. And the most painful aspect of it. When they start playing some of this song with worldly beats. And you see people with skimpy skirts and transparent things dancing and shaking the whole of their body. I know Satan will be happy. A moment like that gives Satan a lot of joy. And I know Jesus Christ could be saying in his heart. That my people perish for lack of knowledge. But unfortunately, a lot of sugar-coated messages leading people astray and making people to feel very comfortable in their sins are everywhere. May the Lord deliver his church. I want to ask a very simple question. How many people that wear the wedding veil today how many people that put on the wedding veil today and walk through the eye of the church with the veil dropped covering their face? How many of them are virgins? How many of them kept themselves? I am not saying there are no people who are living very pure lives. There are people, God has his own elect. There is always a remnant, no matter how deep the immorality grows. God will always have his own. But how many people, that is a question, how many people, how many of them? How many of them keep themselves? That is why we have a lot of problems today, a lot of challenges, a lot of problems in marriages. Marriages are breaking up. The kind of knowledge about marriage, the kind of books we have today, the kind of seminars we hold today, the kind of messages we hear today, our parents never heard them. But their marriages lasted long. They, ne they never experienced this high rate of divorce because they had the fear of God. Even those who were not Christians, they had the fear of God. They have this level, this mindset to promote morality, even though some of them were evil. There are implications in living in immorality. There are implications if we throw away the life of purity, many people do not understand that anyone you sleep with, you become one flesh with that person. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 15 to 18. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the member of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to one harlot is one body. For two, seeth he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Shush, flee fornication. I'm not the one telling you. The Bible is the one telling you. Because every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God. And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. This matter is very, very serious. I've been into counseling and deliverance ministry for many years. And from experience, I know a lot of people found themselves in the problem they are in today because of the kind of people they slept with. Many people no longer care. They just look at the beauty. They just look at what they can get from the person. They just look at the monetary aspect and sell their body. There are implications. But let me just run through, run through some implications. Demonic possessions. When you sleep with someone that is possessed, you could catch a demon from there. 
And a lot of people have been used for rituals. Yahoo and Yahoo Plus and many of these people. We, we see video clips of people they use. We read the newspaper. People they use for rituals. A lot of people have become barren. Let me just quickly read the scripture. Hosea chapter 4 verse 10 says, For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom. That means they shall commit immorality and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Many wombs have become closed. People are becoming more and more dry in marriage. Gynecologists are making so much money because there are lots of infertility problems. But if you do a spiritual diagnosis, you will see that many of these things are actually as a result of the kind of people some people had relationships with. Today, many marriages are breaking. A lot, the divorce rate is so high. Even in Christianity, even among many church leaders, how many of these marriages have their foundation on Christ? People want to build a relationship that your future generation is going to come out from. And you build the foundation. You lay the foundation on sexual immorality. And you think Jesus will be there, except you repent and correct those mistakes. It can never be as peaceful as when you had laid the foundation on Christ alone. We see people going bankrupt. You see mommy water. You see angel of darkness. You want to die there. So people have become, have lost their jobs because of the kind of people they friend. We have to be careful as a church. Many people have granted access to the devil so that he can assess the upon generation. Let me just take a little time to explain. Many people do not actually understand that what comes out of you, please understand if you are an adult, whatsoever comes out of you when you have a relationship, when you meet, what comes out of you co contains your DNA and the information of your generation are encoded, they are entwined in your DNA. Some people don't know where their problems come from. Let me tell you, a satanic agent can know the future of your generation through what comes out of you. Because the information that are contained in your DNA that your father passed on to you, that you want to pass on to the next generation, they are there. Even they can assess the, the information of your future generation up to the fourth generation. When they couldn't kill Samson, they brought a woman, Delilah, and she succeeded. Church, let's be wise. Let us be wise. Me, I tell people, I've stopped praying anyhow. I can't be fasting and praying for you because you are a problem, and in the night you are clubbing and you are with one satanic agent. No, I have stopped praying anyhow. In fact, a lot of times when I see people and I see where their problem is coming from, I only tell them, do this, do this, repent. I have stopped praying fire brigade service prayers. That when the fire is burning, fire brigade will come and quench the fire and go. No. People should be taught how to stay away from problem. You can't be having a relationship with somebody that is from the water kingdom and you are always disturbing your pastor every day. Pastor, pray for me. Oh. Pastor, pray for me. Oh. Witches are oppressing me. Oh. Nothing is moving forward. The question is, how are you living your life? How? Why is it that these people have so much stronghold over your life? You don't, many people don't ask that question. Satan does not strike if you don't give him a foothold. He will never strike. If the angel of the Lord surrounds you, Psalm 34, verse 7, it's a scripture I love so much. It says, the angel of the Lord encampeth right about them that fear him and delivereth them. When you are in Christ, God will release his guardian angel to protect you. A lot of prayers have not been answered 
Because when God looks down from heaven, he sees people who have so much immorality in their hands. Abortion, killing, because you don't want anybody to know. You decide to kill an innocent soul in order to cover up for your sin. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15 says, And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. The eighth reason, the Holy Spirit departs from people who live in immorality. If the body that is a house of God is destroyed, there will be no place for God to live in. The best way to fight the battles of this life is to purify your life. Is to live a holy life so that God will always be with you. The only thing that is a problem to humanity is sin. Sin is a problem of humanity. If we want to deal with the problem of humanity, we have to address the issue of sin. If everybody lives a holy life, Satan will have no power over us again. Do you know that Satan met Jesus during the temptation? Satan said unto Jesus, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. He said, It is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Underline the word, it is delivered unto me. Who delivered it? When man fell in the garden of Eden, he lost his authority to the devil. And when Jesus came, he took the power from him and gave it back to man. He said, Lord, authority, all power and authority has been given unto me. He restored us back to our former place of dominion. A lot of people have given access to the devil. Access to the enemy of God. And they are facing a lot of challenges. People are facing so much demonic oppression because they have left off, they veered off from the way of righteousness. Lots of people have become so demonically possessed and demonically oppressed to the point that some can't even sleep. Today, the Lord is calling us to repent us. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18 and 20. Come now, let us reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse, if you refuse, I'm reading Isaiah chapter 1, 18 to 20. Verse 20 says, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. How many of us are ready to give our lives to Christ? How many of us are ready to give our lives to Jesus Christ? How many of us are in bondage? Let me tell you, there is power in holiness. When you are holy and you are living your life according to the precepts of God, the God of heaven and earth will send his angel to protect you. At least one. There are Christians that have many angels. There are some that have just one angel. Some of you who are facing a lot of oppression, it is because you have fired your angel. Some of us have made our bodies so dirty that the Spirit of God can no longer live in it. But if you can just resolve today to give your life to Jesus Christ, you will be set free and you will possess the power of the kingdom. It is not how much you pray, I tell people. It is not how loud you scream. It is about the authority that you have in the kingdom. Elijah prayed a very short prayer, and before he could finish praying, fire, live fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, including the stones and lit up the water, including the dust, everything. How many of you are ready to renew your covenant with God? I want to pray with you. Father Lord, thank you for your word that your children have heard. I ask that as many that you have spoken to today, as many for whom this message came, Lord, I pray 
that your power will sanctify them. As many who are living in bondage because of the way they live their lives. Father, we pray that you set them free in the name of Jesus. May he be well with you. May the Lord draw you closer to himself. May God give you strength to overcome sin. May God give you the power to live a holy life. Jesus is coming again and this is what we know, that he is coming. May the Lord God Almighty strengthen you. It is not of him that will it. It is not of him that run it. But it is of God that showeth mercy. If you can position yourself in a place where you can receive the mercy of the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ will never forsake you. This is the assurance that we have in him. That when we ask anything in his name, he will give it to us. If you can cry out to God, God Almighty, we receive you to himself and draw you closer to himself. Receive strength to run the race. Receive grace to forge ahead. May it be well with you. And I pray for as many that are living in holiness. I pray for as many and I encourage as many that are living the life of purity. May the Lord God Almighty strengthen you. You will not miss the kingdom in the name of Jesus. May the Lord open your eyes so that you don't walk blindly. May the Lord God Almighty release his angels to guide you through. It is well with you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. For more information, visit www.hosannadavid.com. God, bless you.